everyone, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel and a happy new year. Wow, 2022, done tick. And let's go, 2023 has to be some positivity in this coming new year. So I wish you a very, very happy new year. Thank you so much for supporting my channel in the past year. If you've been here all the way through and a very warm welcome to those of you who have recently subscribed. I'm so happy that you're here and I hope that you stick around and enjoy this love of books together. So today is all about my January TBR. I'm really pumped. I'm really excited. I love TBRs. I'm enjoying watching everybody's TBRs for the brand new year. There's such an optimism and excitement around it. I'm really excited for my January reads. I've got lots of books here to talk to you about, so I won't go into a lot of detail. It's fair to say these are probably a range of possibilities. I'm sure not all of them will be read, but I'm really excited to share them with you today. So let's start with the book that you, the subscribers, chose for me. About a week ago, I gave you a selection of five books to choose from. These are books that have been hauled in January 2022. And the winner was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. I think I said Scoot before. It's Skloot. Now, so first of all, thank you so much to all of you who voted. I had such an overwhelming response again and a monster cause for those of you who voted for that. It nearly, nearly got there. So I will keep that on my radar for later in the year. Now, this is a non-fiction book, which is great because I did not read enough non-fiction last, this year, 2022, and I want to read more. And I should just say as well, I'm going to be buddy reading this with the lovely Mitzi from Mitzi Reads and Writes and the lovely Krista from Books and Jams. So we are going to take our time with this one over the month and savour it. Absolutely fascinating story, non-fiction about a woman who, without her knowledge and consent, her cells were taken by scientists and used in the development of lots of medical um, developments and um, progression. And this did not even come to light until after her death. Even her family did not know until about 20 years later. And hence, her cells still live on and are being used in those scientific developments. And so, hence the immortality element. So, yeah, I've heard such good things about this. I can't wait to tackle this in the new year. A couple more buddy reads I have lined up. And the first one being Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. And I'll be reading this for the lovely Marilyn Maya Mendoza. Should just say all of these channels I mention here in this video will be linked down in the description down below. We are reading this because it is the book choice for the FOMO book club for January and February, which is run by the lovely Gemma, Alice and Jack. And I'll leave all their channels down below. And I'm really looking forward to this one, a modern classic and very gothic and set down in the southwest of England. So yeah, really looking forward to getting back to Daphne du Maurier. And of course, the return of the Harry Hole series by Yo Nesbo. This I'm reading with the lovely Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf and the lovely Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. And this is Phantom. And this is a series which is written by Yo Nesbo, who is Norwegian and translated from the Norwegian language and will be set um, in Oslo. It's a thriller. This is number nine. We've been reading the series right from the beginning and I just love my body reading experience with them as well. And yeah, they haven't even actually looked at the plot of this one. So, but no doubt there'll be a serial killer and Harry will be fighting some of his personal demons. So yeah, love that front cover though. So, so atmospheric and the snow, snow all coming down. Now, next up is my TBR vet pick. These are 16 books which are the oldest on my shelves they were hauled in 2018 and have still not been read so in this box here i have all 16 of them on a piece of paper so each month i'm going to randomly pick one to get it in the forefront of my mind and hopefully pick it up that month so let's have a look let's go right in and right this one is ah oh. You can see that. The Wisdom of Sally Red Shoes. Now, this is by Ruth Hogan. Right, so this one, as I say, is on my Kindle. So I've just had a little look to see 
what type of book it is and it is contemporary. I've actually read The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan a few years ago and um, quite enjoyed it and found it really quite a quick read. So yeah, so yeah, we'll add that one in and hopefully it should be, could be a good possibility for the new year. So here we go. In my bag, I have 12 different ways in which I'm going to choose my TBR for each of the months in 2023. There are all different sorts in here. It could be booktuber favourites, it could be my favourite authors, it could be series, it could be cover prompts. Um, we will find out there's one for each month of the year. So here we go. I'm going to pick my first one for January and it is, here we go. Ooh. Ooh, can you see that? Theme prompts. Right, okay, right, I'm gonna to have to get back to you because I've now got to get my other bag full of all different themes. I'm gonna to have to randomly select some themes. Hi again, so I'm back. Um, so I pulled out theme prompts. Now what that means is in this bag now, my candy cane bag, I have 20 prompts, all which are themes. So now I'm going to pick out six of them and try and match a book for me to read in January. So here we go. Let's go. Number one is ooh, Forbidden Love. So for the first prompt of Forbidden Love, I have two possibilities here. The first one being The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak. I have been highly anticipating this read. This, of course, was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction last year. Loads and loads of people read it and I held back. I tend to do that a little bit when books are overhyped. Um, it's fair to say that this got quite mixed reactions. Some absolutely loved it and thought it should have won and others didn't like it at all particularly the talking fig tree from what I can gather but um, if you've been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I am in love with Elif Shafak's writing don't always give her books five stars but the writing I find sublime and I'm really excited to try this one this is um, about two t um, teenagers called Costas and Daphne. But the problem is that one of them is a Greek Cypriot and one of them is a Turkish Cypriot, hence the, the forbidden love. And I think complications are going to happen when war breaks out. So that's all I know, but I'm really excited to um, get to that one. The other one I have as a possibility for Forbidden Love is this one, The Forgotten Letters of Esther Durant by Kate Nunn. Look at that cover. That is one of my favourites. Oh, I love it with the, the blue, the dusty blue and the butterfly and the flowers. But yeah, my mum gave me this and she gave this five stars. I've read The Botanist Daughter by Kate Nunn and really enjoyed that. Most of her books seem to be dual timeline. This is historical fiction and we are going between 1951 and 2018. And I think in 1951, a young mother is committed to a mental asylum by her husband. And then I think in 2018, a woman finds some letters when she's down in Cornwall in England. And clearly it is about a forbidden love story. So yeah, there's something about this is drawing me very much. And it might be one of the first books I kick off with actually in the month. So the second prompt that we're going to pull out is, I get one. War. Oh, right. So we're going to kick off um, January with some heavy themes here. So wars number two. So for the prompt of war, I am going to go with An Eagle in the Snow by Michael Mapergo. And here we can see, we can see some soldiers are running through the snow here. It says one moment that could have saved the world from war. Now, Michael Mapergo is one of my favourite um, middle grade authors and this is another children's book. It is set in 1940 and it says the powerful news story from the master storyteller inspired by the true story of one man who might have stopped World War II. So this seems to fit this prompt perfectly. Also, um, I was thinking as well, the island of missing trees, it appears that that forbidden love story is affected by war. So that could be a crossover as well with that prompt. So on to prompt number three. And 
Just trying to get one prompt here. <gasps> Friendship. Now I love this prompt of friendship and I've got two great possibilities for this prompt. The first one being Saving Missy by Beth Amore. I've heard so many positive reviews of this and it seems like the perfect book for the beginning of the year. It's about a 79 year old lady called Missy. So I love an elderly protagonist and apparently she has a chance encounter with two strangers and their dog in presumably a park. And it's a really endearing story of a developing friendship. And she was quite lonely and isolated from her family. And yeah, that sounds fantastic. Very tempted to start with that one as well. And the other one is the sequel to Away With The Penguins by Hazel Pryor. And that is Call of The Penguins. So this is number two in a duology. I really enjoyed the first one. And we are following Veronica McCready, who is 87 years old. And she has a very unlikely friendship in this one with a nine-year-old girl called Daisy. And they discover that they have a shared passion for penguins and a shared thirst for adventure. So yeah, this is gonna be another real feel-good factor. Can't wait to get to this one as well. So problem number four is going deep. This one. Oh, love that. Coming of age. Oh, I do love a good coming of age story. So for this coming of age prompt, I think I am switching it up slightly and going to go for something a little bit deeper than some of the books that I've mentioned already. And the first one being The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Now, I said that I want to prioritise certain classics and this was one of them. I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy this book. I know that it's about a teenager. It's very rebellious. I think it's quite a raw book. And it might be that I find it a little bit too hard going. We shall see. I'm really interested to know if you've read this or whether you liked it, abandoned it. Did you have to study it at school? Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. And the second one for this prompt is another classic that I would love to start. And that is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And of course, the coming of age story of Pip from childhood to adulthood. Now, I think I'm going to have a bit of a different perspective with this one. I'm not necessarily going to make myself read it within the month. It might go on longer. My lovely friend Deborah from Booking with Deborah, I think she read this this year and she read it along with the channel Art Bookshelf Odyssey and I'll link his channel down below and he read The Great, um, Great Expectations but he chunked it up into 18 different sections and then produced a video for each one at the end of those sections. And I think that's a fantastic way of doing it. So I might follow that schedule, um, set myself those chunked up sections and then watch his video after that as a good incentive to keep going. So yeah, this might be one that you see go into a February as well. So on to number five. this one. Haha, -ha. siblings. Oh, that's good as well. So for the prompt of siblings, my first choice is When God Was a Rabbit by Sarah Women. I read Tin Man by Sarah Women a few years back and thought that was a beautiful story. This one says on the back, this is a book about a brother and a sister. So it fits perfectly. It's a book about childhood and growing up, friendships and families, triumph and tragedy and everything in between. More than anything, it's a book about love in all its forms. So I've had this on my um, shelf for quite a while. So yeah, this would be a good opportunity to get to this one. The other one that I thought I might try is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Of course, she is extremely popular author here on Booktube. When I was looking at the review of it, it said, it started off with four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of summer. Over the next 24 hours, their lives will change forever. So clearly it's about four different siblings. So it fitted this prompt perfectly. Right, so last prompt for January. Here we go, let's give it a good shake. Right, for prompt number six, let's see what this one is. Parenting. 
Uh, that's interesting because that could be parenting little ones or parenting teenagers, or it could be parenting, like grandparents parenting adult children. Ooh, fascinating. Let's see what I've got. So for the prompt of parenting, I'm going to go for a book on my Kindle, which is On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vion. Now, this is a very poetic book, I think. It's quite short, I believe, which is a bonus with this huge TBR. And it is written from a guy in his 20s writing to his mother about his upbringing, I believe, and the impact of the war in Vietnam, where they were, and him coming of age as well, I believe, which so that would also fit in with my coming of age prompt. And the second choice I have for this prompt is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. It's a book I hauled quite recently, it's YA, and it's the prequel to The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which was such a resounding success following the life of Star. This is following the life of Maverick, who is Star's um, father, hence linking into the parenting prompt. We learn about him becoming a young dad, very young dad, and how he deals with that and with the fact that his own parents, his own father, I think, is in jail and his relationship with his own mother. So yeah, I thought that one might be sort of a quick read and I've heard really good things about this one as well. So there we go. They are all my possibilities for January. I am so excited about all of them. But before we go, I just want to check that I am meeting my goals for 2023. So first of all, have I got a vet? Yes, I have The Wisdom of Sally Red Shoes by Ruth Hogan. Have I got a classic? Yes, I have The Catcher in the Rye and Great Expectations. Series, I've got Call of the Penguins to finish off the duology. And I have Phantom by Yo Nesbo, the Harry Hole series. Five star prediction. I've put The Island of Missing Trees by Liv Shafak on my five star predictions list this year. So I'm getting to one of them this month. Countries, which countries um, am I hitting in the month of January? UK, USA, Norway, Cyprus, Vietnam, and Antarctica. So that is quite a good start, I think, to um, getting towards my target of 40 countries to read for settings this year. And before I go, there is a readathon which I am participating in called the Past and Future Readathon. This was started by my lovely friend Emily from Novel Novels, and I've been doing this readathon since she set it up a couple of years ago. She has some new co hosts with her. She has Gemma from Gemma Books, Jack from Spread Book Joy, and Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. And I will link all their announcement videos down below. It's a brilliant readathon. It is running the whole of January, and the prompts are really manageable, which is a great way to kick off the year. So I've got my other little notebook here. I'm just going to see what I have fitted in to these prompts. So first of all, the past prompts. And the first one is to read a book by a favourite author. Now for me to have the category favourite, I have to have read three books, at least three books for them, and have given at least four stars for each of them. So I have two which fulfil that. I have Michael Mapurgo, absolutely love him as a middle grade author for Eagle in the Snow. And also Yo Nesbo has become a favourite author. I've given at least three of his books um, four stars. So I've got Phantom for that one. Number two says to read a TBR vet. Well, I... Of course, got picked out my TBR vet box, The Wisdom of Sally Red Shoes. So that's my TV, TBR vet choice. Problem number three is a children's book to relive your youth. So, of course, the Michael Mapurgo book is going to fit that one as well as it's a children's book. Number four is to read a book from before you were born. And this one, Jamaica Inn, with by Daphne du Maurier, was actually published in 1936. And although I'm old, I'm not quite that old. So that one definitely fits this prompt. Now on to the future prompts. And you're supposed to read one that is set in the future. Now, Gemma is going to laugh at this because she knows that I don't really like science fiction and I'm gonna try and wiggle my way out of this one by going for The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks because her cells were taken and then were used in the future. And because she's immortal, they're going to keep being used in the future. So, Gemma, I hope that that fits and you let me use this one. 
Number six is one that you're looking forward to. And for this one, I have to undoubtedly say my five-star prediction, The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak. I'm really excited to get to that one and see what I think about it after all the hype. Number seven is to read a book with a protagonist older than you. So of course we can go for Saving Missy as Missy is in her 70s and I am not quite there yet. Um, prompt number eight is a feel-good book to set the tone for 2023. Well of course this one could be part of that but I think Penguin's has to be Call of the Penguins by Hazel Pryor. I think that's going to be such a feel-good factor and can't wait to try that one. So thank you to all those hosts. So there are a lot of books there. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you kick off the year in a really positive way. Have you read any of these books? Please let me know and give your opinion down below and tell me what is the book that you are really excited for in January 2023 to start the year off in a positive way. I'd love to know. Please take care. Bye.